Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for being on the check-in with uh, PRB. Every uh, Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, we are bringing you the best of uh, local hospitality leaders. And uh, this morning, we are very, very happy, very lucky to be uh, with uh, Mr. Alain Piala. Uh, good morning, Alain. How are you doing today? Morning, Pierre. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Uh, for people who don't know you, Alain, I always like to do a quick introduction about who you are before we go into questions and uh, learning about your experience in the industry and all the valuable uh, things you are going to share with us. Do you mind if I spend three or four minutes going through who you are? You want me to do that? I do it. Oh, you do it, okay. <laughs> so, Lisa, I'm going to try to make it short and smooth, but you have quite, quite some achievements. So, let me say first that uh, you are a 30-year veteran uh, of the hotel industry. You did your study in uh, the Paris Hotel and Tourism Management School. You got diplomas of Stanford University and Northwestern as well. And uh, Alain, you did most of your career in hospitality with Marriott, where you spent 24 years. Um, but first of all, before Marriott, you opened and managed the first Le Meridian hotel in the US, who was in Houston. So you did launch this brand in the US, but then you went into running Marriott for 24 years where you went three years in Dayton, four years in Denver, four years in Boston, eight years in San Francisco. Uh, and then uh, you were really lucky at the property. You were a general manager of those different properties, most of them very large properties, convention hotel uh, in big market. And then you were promoted to area vice president of Northern California. And then you were probably president of Marriott Lodge in Canada and senior VP Marriott Lodge in Midwestern, where you were managing 400 hotels under 13 brands. Following this whole career with Marriott, once again, where you spent 24 years, since we are in the Bay Area, you joined a technology company, a startup company uh, called Beverage Metrics where you were the CEO, and that started the company was keeping track of all alcohol consumptions from the other food, from food and beverage. And now you are a consultant in the hotel industry. You are specialized in asset management and hotel development, both in France and in the US. Since you're not busy enough, Alain, you are an author as well. You did a book that is called We Rocked we walled and we open, which is uh, the story of when the San Francisco Marriott, now called the Marriott Marquis, meets the 1989 Loma Prieta earthquake, which happened on October 17th, 1989. Uh, and we will talk about that. And on top of it, you are very involved with association and universities as well. So, I mean, you know, hello, well done. <laughs> well, it's because I'm old that I've been able to do all those things. So I, I don't know that I deserve a lot of credit, but I've been around a long time. So I'm older than I look. So that's what it is. <laughs> well, I think it, you, you, did, you did very well and you're doing very well. So, uh, Alain, my first question to you is going to be, how, when did you know you wanted to be part of the hospitality industry. What, what made you choose that industry? You know, it's an interesting question because I was 17 years old and I was thinking of what college I wanted to go to. Um, and, um, you know, the, the hospitality business in those days was uh, very traditional. Uh, but it sounded very glamorous. So I think I'm a bit snob. So I... Uh, I, I like the idea. I wanted, at the age of 17, I decided I wanted to become a general manager because it sounded very glamorous. Uh, 
and uh, you know, went to the Paris Hotel School and did my uh, college years there. And uh, next thing I knew, I was, you know, I started in Paris for a very short period of time uh, at the former Hotel de Paris in Paris. And then uh, you know, decided that uh, there were not enough opportunities. You know, in those days, you really had to wait until your, your boss died before you could get promoted. So I decided I would leave for the United States, and I did. I landed in New York with very little money in my pocket. Spent about three months in New York and uh, couldn't get a job, so I went to Canada and started my career in Canada. So you started your career in Canada in the hotel business? You worked yeah. in hotels in Canada? Yeah. My first job uh, in Canada was at the, <coughs> excuse me, at the Hilton at the then the Doval Airport, which is now called, I guess, the Pierre Trudeau Airport. But in those days, it was called uh, Doval. And my first job was uh, as a night auditor, uh, where, you know, you do the accounting at night. And uh, in those days, we used the uh, NCR machines, uh, which are obsolete now since we have those fancy computers. And you had to, you had to balance to the penny. So, uh, and, and if you didn't balance to the penny in the morning, uh, you stayed until you found the mistake. So that's how I started and then uh, spent a couple of years in Canada and then went back to the United States where, you know, then the rest is history, as we say. So, so when you went back to the U.S. and when you did the opening of uh, Le Meridian brand, how was that experience? Like, because launching a brand is... Uh, I mean, it's a very, very important task and uh, well, uh, it's probably a lot more pressure than just being a general manager at any other hotels. How did you, how, how, how did you live through that experience and what did you gain from it? Well, um, it was a fascinating experience, first of all. Um, and they wanted a general manager. We don't hear you, Ella. Sorry, Ella. <laughs> we don't hear you. Oh, oh yeah. Is it? Okay. Yeah, you, you were just cut for 10 seconds, Ella. We just missed the first 10 seconds. Okay, so, um, it, well, I see that uh, I get some uh, unstable connection, so my apology. Anyway, um, you know, uh, Meridian Hotel was owned by Air France at the time. Uh, and this was going to be their first hotel in the United States. So that was obviously very important to them. They wanted a general manager who was French, but had the experience of the United States. And I'd worked, you know, already for quite a, uh, quite a bit of time in, in the U.S. So, you know, I went to Houston. And it was when I got there, the hotel was actually a hole in the ground. There was nothing. Uh, and I had to, because, uh, because Meridian didn't have an organization in the United States, I was expected to do everything. So I was given the opportunity to, you know, negotiate the financial loans and credits and things like that, which, you know, normally a general manager wouldn't do. Uh, and then coordinate, uh, you know, uh, the activities, the planning of the opening of the hotel with the construction folks and so on and so forth. So, how many people did you have in that in, in that hotel? How big was the loans? How big was the was the property you were working at in Houston, Texas? You can't hear me. I, I couldn't hear what you were saying there. Oh, sorry. Well, it's not you, me. You, dis saying, you disappeared I, for a minute there. <laughs> what was the question? How big was the property in Houston, Texas? Uh, it was place? about, uh, try to remember, it was 350 rooms at downtown Houston. Okay. Uh, it was a spectacular building, uh, old glass building. It's now, I think it's become a, a devil tree now. But, uh, you know, what's interesting is, as I was saying, Meridian was owned by Air France. And it, then it went to uh, Intercontinental, bought Meridian. And Marriott bought Meridian uh, with the Starwood acquisition a few years later. So 
uh, you know, now Marriott, uh, Marriott owns uh, Meridian Hotel. So it's gone full circle. Full circle, yeah, here you go. <laughs> so you never know when, who you're going to be working for at uh, one time or another, you know? Yeah, and, and, and I think it's very specific to the hotel industry where, you know, uh, when you do a career in, in our industry, you're going to meet people, you're going to see properties, flags, or it's a, uh, it's very unusual to see so many people that you meet through your career. So how, how did you join Marriott? Because you were at the Meridian, you did the opening of the brand, and then you moved into Marriott. How did that happen? Well, you know, I started my career with, uh, with Hilton. You know, I started my career really in the United States at the World of Astoria in New York City. I spent uh, five, six years at the World, at the World of Astoria. Uh, then I moved on to other Hilton properties. I opened uh, the White Town Hilton in White Town, uh, Westchester County, New York. Um, so, um, and then in 1974, I joined Marriott, actually. And I ran a number of companies, a number of hotels for Marriott as a number two. Um, and um, when Meridian came my way, it was very tempting, you know, being a French background and so on and so forth. Yeah. It was very, very tempting to go and open the hotel. So I did that and I stayed there about two or three years uh, to get the hotel started. And, and then uh, very frankly, um, you know, I like Marriott a lot, and uh, Marriott came back knocking on my door, and so I uh, went back to Marriott and then opened uh, an additional four hotels for them. So the four hotels you went to in Dayton, Denver, Boston, and San Francisco were all opening hotels? Uh, except the one in, uh, well, it's not exactly true. Um, in uh, Dayton was an opening, San Francisco was an opening, Denver was, I didn't actually do the opening, but I got there like a couple of months after the opening. So it was, it, it was a yeah. transition. And then Boston, same thing. Boston, I didn't open Boston per se, but I was there like three or four months after the, the opening. Yeah. So did, did you like, is that something you were looking for to go with new properties or uh, what, what, did, what did really your forte? Was it what you like most to to take off property and make them, you know, ramp up and yeah. get after a market? So San Francisco gave me, you know, Boston and San Francisco were very, very, very large hotels. So gave me the opportunity to, um, you know, not, not only open the hotels or be at the, the very beginning of the hotel, but also manage some very large hotel, which is also very exciting. And the largest hotel you were in charge of was the San Francisco market, the market yeah. called the San Francisco Marriott, renamed the Marquis San Francisco, where you were in charge of 1,500 rooms and uh, the 39 floor hotel. So a massive hotel by the Moscone Center, which is a convention center. Yeah, uh, it was, uh, you know, it's a very, uh, San Francisco is a you know, very exciting city. I don't have to tell you. It's a very, <laughs> it's a very challenging city, it's a city sometimes politically, but uh, you know, the hotel, um, I think the, the hotel made a significant impact on the uh, south of market area. You know, when I got to uh, San Francisco in 1988, uh, again, the, the hotel was just a hole in the ground. Um, and, uh, you know, the, and there was very little south of market. Uh, you had the, the convention center, a couple of restaurants, and that was about it. Uh, everything that you know today to be south of market didn't exist. And I am absolutely convinced that the construction of a hotel and a hotel developing in that part of town 
uh, had a significant impact on, on the entire South of market area. And now you know what it is. I mean, you got museums, you got restaurants, you got convention centers, you got all kinds of activities and uh, residential that really, very frankly, uh, China Basin and all that uh, didn't exist in those days. Very well. And, and how, do you remember how many employees you had roughly? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, uh, we opened the hotel with 1,500 employees, you know, pretty much one per room. Uh, we interviewed, in fact, uh, it, I talk about it in the book that I wrote about it. Uh, we interviewed 12,000 12, people and selected uh, 1,500 employees. So it was a, uh, you know, just the selection process was a significant uh, task. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. How, how long did it took to hire the, to go to those 12,000 applicants? <laughs> Well, it took, uh, you know, honestly, it took uh, probably a couple of months. We had uh, directors of uh, human resources coming from various Marriott hotels. We selected a facility, a very, very large facility. Not you, you couldn't bring the hotel, the, the 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 prospective employees into the hotel because uh, it was under construction. So we had to um, find a hiring hall. Uh, and, uh, you know, we worked with the community organization in San Francisco and the unions uh, to, you know, go through the selection process. And uh, by the time we were through, we had interviewed some 12,000 people and uh, selected 1,500. Wow. So what would you say the difference is between managing a smaller size property to a very large one like uh, at the marquee. What, what are the main differences as far as management? And well, the... you know, a good management, uh, I don't mean to be flip, but uh, good management at the end of the day is good management. So you try to, you know, create a team uh, that, you, that you can rely on. Um, needless to say, you know, in a smaller hotel, I mean, you press the flesh constantly with the quote unquote, not only with the employees, but with, with the customers. Um, and uh, when you run a, you know, 1500 room hotel, I had 110 managers at the time. Um, and, uh, you know, you have to go through a very uh, careful selection process to make sure that the people not only have the right attitude, they also have the skill set in, in the management team to, um, you know, work on their own because you can't control everything. You provide, uh, you try to provide the overall leadership, uh, the spirit in the hotel, the philosophy and so on and so forth. Uh, but at the end of the day, you've got to rely on, you know, what we call the executive committee. We have the people in charge of the, you know, whether it's rooms, marketing, sales, and, and so on and so forth. And I was very fortunate to have a team of uh, players who were truly outstanding. So, um, in some ways, I don't want to say that it's easier, but uh, in some ways, uh, running a large hotel and if you've got the right players uh, makes it a little easier. It's not uh, that much more difficult, but um, the scope is different. That's what's different. So, something I was impressed by when I uh, was meeting you at your property a couple of times is you seem to know everybody by first name. Can you, you cannot hear me? Can you hear me, Alain? It takes a few seconds. No? <laughs> it disappeared again on me, so I... Okay, I, I I'm I back. I have a question, sorry about that. No, no, it's okay. So, you know, the couple of times I met you at the Marquis Hotel, you seem to know uh, the employees by their first name, and you haven't seen them for some of them for, for quite a few years, but it seemed that it was a big family. And you were able to remember everybody by their first name and asking about their children and everything. It was, that was quite impressive. Uh, and, uh, oh, yeah. In the business, you have those kind of relationships. Yeah, um, 
Absolutely. Um, you know, I don't think I'm exceptional. Um, I think a lot of general managers uh, do the same thing. Um, I got to know, you know, first of all, you have to understand I was living in the hotel. So that in itself, uh, you know, puts you, you live in a fishbowl when you live in a hotel. So everybody knows what you're doing all the time. So you end up uh, knowing a lot of your employees. Um, when we opened the hotel, the philosophy that I attempted to instill in everybody was the concept of one team. In other words, uh, you know, it's not management on one side and uh, the employees or the hourly employees on the other side. It's everybody working together uh, to uh, deliver a first class experience to, to, the, to the customer. So, yeah, you know, living in the hotel, uh, having put in place a hopefully a philosophy that made a bit of difference. Uh, we really had a, um, we really had a very, uh, well, maybe a big family. You may want to, I was very proud actually, uh, back in October, um, 2019, almost a year ago now, or soon a year ago, um, we had the 30th anniversary of the hotel and I was invited for the celebration of the 30th anniversary by the present general manager. Uh, and uh, it will, you still have today 200 or so employees who were there 30 years ago. So uh, we call them the, the charter employees. Um, and it, it was very gratifying to, to see them because everybody remembered me. Uh, and I remembered, you know, most of them, uh, but to know that in a, in a business like the hotel business, where you have such a high turnover normally, you still have 30 years later, 200 employees were there at, at the opening is pretty, pretty exciting. And, you know, I don't think I was disliked. They came running towards me and hugged me and, you know, so on and so forth. So, eh, eh. Um, we had a, we had a good spirit. I think it made the difference in helping make the hotel successful. So that's what you had to do. You know, first thing that I did living in a hotel, of course, it was an advantage, but I would go every morning when I, um, got down to my office, I would take a tour of the hotel and I'd just say hello to everybody and shake everybody's hand and so on. And, so forth. and you know, I have a particular voice, so they knew that I was coming. Uh, <laughs> uh, I am pretty loud when I go through the, I'm pretty <laughs> loud when I go through the, the, the building. So it, you know, didn't hurt me, and this I, it's still nice to be able to do that thirty years later. You know, it reminds me. I have a I have a quite a lot of friends in the restaurant business, uh -huh. and the restaurants that are successful a lot of time, the chef or the owner is there every day yeah. and we greet people mm -hmm. and and it seems like in the hotel business if you want to be a, a successful general manager and be of the great team you have, you have to be not in your office the whole time but really present with your team and and creating well, those bonds. that's what they call managing by walking around there you go <laughs> that's your next book i know <laughs> yeah, maybe I should do that. So, since we are talking about the the marquee San Francisco, uh, I'm going to make a quick transition about the book you wrote and you toured the U.S. promoting it. It is, it is available on Amazon, correct, Anna? Yeah, it is now on Amazon. Uh, you can get so it. To... I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So the name is We Rocked. We, we rolled and we opened. Okay, right. I, I, I will put it in the comments for people who are interested. I will put the link, the mm -hmm. Amazon link for people who want to, uh, to have a look at it and buy it. So could you tell us about this book, how, how this whole thing came and the tour and everything? Well, you know, um, I opened the hotel, of, uh, at the time it was called the uh, San, Fran San Francisco Marriott at Moscone Center. Uh, it's been changed to the Marriott Marquis in the last uh, 10 years, I think. Uh, anyway, um, I opened the hotel on October 17, 1989. 
at nine o'clock in the morning, I, <clears throat> I greeted the first guest in front of a San Francisco media. And it was a big deal because, you know, 1500 room hotel opening up uh, downtown San Francisco, south of market, as I was saying before. So, you know, there was quite a bit, quite a bit of press. And then um, at the 5.04 p.m. that night, same day, October 17, 1989, the Loma Prieta earthquake struck. And, you know, that was a 7, 6.9, 7.1. Uh, earthquake. Uh, so that pretty, uh, was quite significant. Um, it was also coincidentally uh, the, the day of the third game of the World Series between the San Francisco Giants and the Oakland A's. So, I mean, you had all of those events happening at the same time. Um, and so, you know, I, not too many general managers open up a hotel on the day of a significant earthquake. So uh, it was uh, in itself, it was uh, quite a story. Um, and for years after that, uh, so, you know, we sprung into action and took care of the emergency and it's in the book and so on and so forth. But, uh, you know, for years after, uh, you know, then we recovered from the earthquake and so on and so forth, the hotel became successful. But I would say for 30 years, as I said, if I had any talent, I would write a book about uh, the opening uh, of the hotel. <laughs> and I had, you know, I live in Sonoma, California now, and I have a friend uh, is a writer and invited me to lunch one day about three or four years ago now and said, uh, you know, you really have to write this book. So uh, kind of threw a challenge at me. And so I decided, well, you know, why not? I'll, uh, I'll give it a shot. And um, so I started writing the book. It took me about a year. I had uh, somebody um, work with me uh, on the editing part of it. A woman, a writer, was very, was very good. So that helped out. And then uh, I, um, thanks to another uh, person, contact, who specializes in that kind of work, I self-published, uh, and this uh, woman uh, helped me out and did a great job. And then, uh, you know, I'm not very big, uh, I'm not very good, or was not very good about social media stuff. But uh, uh, I, so I retained somebody who's now a friend who works with me on social media. And, you know, I wanted the book to come out before the 30th anniversary. And so it came out on, uh, in August of 2019, that's about a year ago, and and, uh, and that's the story. Uh, and I took advantage of writing the book on the earthquake, which was significant, and what happened, and so on and so forth. But you also talk about uh, the hotel business, a bit of my career, uh, what it is to live in a hotel, uh, because you know it's. For employees, the general manager who lives in a hotel is kind of uh, uh, intriguing, let me put it this way. You know, they, everybody knows what you're doing at a, any given time. So uh, how do you, you know, how do you handle that and so on? So, you know, I think uh, hopefully the book, uh, you know, it's not very big, it's a quick read, but I hope that uh, people have enjoyed it. So far, the feedback that I've gotten has been, uh, uh, pretty positive. And some people would like the book because uh, they are intrigued. You know, they were in San Francisco on the day of the earthquake. So that brought back some memories. And some people kind of like the book because um, it's, you know, the life of, of a hotel general manager is always intriguing. And some would like the book because they don't necessarily know what happens in the back of the house, as we call it in, in the business. So anyway, I had fun writing it. And Hopefully, people will enjoy write, uh, reading it. So, very well. Well, you know, Alain, uh, when sometimes your your name comes along because you've been in San Francisco for quite some time, and uh, when your conversation when in your conversation your name pops up, in my mind, I'm always thinking, Alain is the only general manager I know that opened and closed a hotel the same day. <laughs> 
Well, uh, you know, uh, I, I missed a little bit of what you were saying because it's kind of shut, uh, shut itself up. But uh, for years, I would introduce myself as the only general manager who opened and closed a hotel on the <laughs> same. <laughs> yeah, is that exactly? <laughs> but uh, it, uh, it was kind of a, a misnomer because uh, we actually didn't close the hotel. What we did, though, uh, we had about 300 guests in the hotel on the first day. So we brought everybody down, uh, put them in the ballroom, which is uh, two levels below the street level, a very large ballroom. Um, and uh, we took in an additional 300 people off the street who were looking for ref you know, refuge and brought them down to the ballroom. And we uh, spent the night uh, feeding them. Uh, we had some TVs uh, scattered throughout the ballroom um, on generators. So they were watching CNN nonstop. And in the book, uh, there is a chapter called The Pods. We organized, uh, we organized those people, all those refugees in uh, pods of about 30 people. Uh, and we had one manager responsible for each pod, so to speak. Um, and, uh, you know, we kept them safe. We, we, had, we set up a medical station. A lot of people were stressed. Some had uh, kind of gotten hurt running down the stairs. We didn't have any death or anything like that. Um, we mostly had uh, cosmetic damage in the hotel. We didn't have some structural damage, which was good. Uh, but, uh, you know, for instance, so we took them in and spent the, the night with them and the morning, you know, we had plenty of food because it was the day of the opening. So we set up a, a buffet with uh, ice carvings and <coughs> which were there in, in the freezer and, uh, then sent everybody home and, you know, but, uh, you know, a couple of weeks later, three weeks later, business started coming back and it took a while to rebuild, but eventually, you know, the hotel became successful. So that's, that's what essentially happened. So people, please have a look at uh, Alain Piala's book and you can read a lot of anecdotes on this whole thing. That's, that's quite an experience to go into crisis mode that you go through. And I'm sure that there is a, a lot to learn from it. I can't hear. I still. Pierre? Yes, I'm here. Is that okay now? Uh, now I can hear you. <laughs> so, so, uh, let just... me ask you this. You worked for Marriott for 24 years. What makes Marriott such, such a good brand, such a big brand? such a successful brand? Well, actually, I worked for Marriott for when you put the two periods of my yeah. 30 years. But anyway, that matter. Uh, you know, uh, Marriott uh, is a company that I, I was very fortunate to work for Marriott. I joined Marriott uh, in 1974 when we had 26 hotels, when Marriott had 26 hotels. Marriott has 7,000 hotels. Um, the philosophy of the company when I joined Marion, was take care of your employees. They will take care of a customer and the profits will come, which, you know, is, a, is an interesting way to, to look at it. Um, we don't put profits first, put, you know, the employee first and then making sure that they take care of the guests. So that philosophy always impressed me. Uh, and, you know, today Marriott has 7,000 hotel uh, with 30 different brands, which when you think about it is truly remarkable. Uh, keep in mind when I joined Marriott, 26 hotels, one brand, two service hotels. Now, you know, you've got everything from Ritz-Carlton to Renaissance to Fairfield Inn to, you know, Town Place Suite and so on and so forth, residency. Um, and, and many of the brands. But in spite of the growth, things have changed, you know, there's no question. And of course, right now, the, 
the hotel industry is going through some terrible, terrible time. I'll have to tell you that. But the uh, bottom line is uh, they've tried to keep up with the philosophy of, uh, you know, take care of your employees, you'll take care of the customer and the profits will come. So uh, I think that has made over the years the difference. Uh, you had a leader um, like Bill Marriott who would travel uh, 200 days out of the year to visit hotel. You know, he was like, Oops, sorry, Anna. We lost you for a couple of seconds. All uh, right. So sorry. I I live in the house uh, which I love, but the the signals are on the air. It's okay. But basically, Mr. Marriott was living by example, traveling yeah. 200 days out of the year, going to property, sh shaking hands, and yeah, he was he was exactly. pretty. So. Uh, I have I have a quick uh, story to tell people. I'm sorry now I'm talking about myself, but I remember bringing you in a scooter from the Marriott Union Square to the Marriott Marquis. Back, I don't know if you remember that, but you and I took my scooter and you went on the on the scooter oh. ride. <laughs> I've never been so scared in my life. <laughs> well, hey, you were running late for for a meeting. <laughs> and I said, okay, I bring you, let's go. <laughs> That's true. I remember that now. I had forgotten about it, but yeah. <laughs> uh, so how was your move? Uh, you know, I know that retirement does not fit you well. Alain, it's not in your personality. How did you get involved into this tech company? I mean, we are in the Bay Area where tech is the big thing, obviously. But how did you get involved? with uh, beverage metrics and going into that tech side of the business? How did it happen? Well, um, you know, I, um, well, first of all, I stopped, after I retired from Marriott uh, in 2005, I, I tried retirement and as you said, it didn't work out for me at all, you know? Uh, so I think my wife was getting tired of having me around 20, 24 sevens. So I decided after six months, it was time to do something. And uh, I, I worked as a consultant uh, for ownership groups first. And then uh, uh, some investors out of Europe came to me and uh, they were considering, they were involved with the so-called RFID technology, RFID, you know, these are the scans and so on and so forth. And uh, they had attempted to start a uh, one company uh, using RFID technology to keep track of beverage consumption in restaurant. And they wanted to know whether or not uh, I could uh, work with their investment group to, you know, apply this kind of technology to uh, hotels and catering operations and that kind of a thing. So. Uh, I said yes, sounded, uh, sounded intriguing. Um, and so we worked on uh, uh, this concept for about uh, four years, I think. And, uh, uh, you know, I think the, the technology had great potential. Uh, eventually, um, I stepped out because or you not and uh, investment philosophies are a little different in Europe so uh, eventually I stepped out of it but And then you were able to reconcile the consumption at the end of the day with the cash register. So it was a, it's an interesting concept. And I think, uh, you know, a number of companies have tried and it exists uh, with beer and things like that. 
Um, uh, I think uh, it had potential, but we didn't really go as big time as I frankly would have wanted. Okay, very well. It was it a challenges, uh, challenging environment where there are a lot of competitors in that, in that place of, of tech product where the, where the hotel at the time receptive to technology product already or would it be too early? Um, it was a very intriguing concept, very intriguing uh, product. There was a little bit of pushback uh, by some of the bartenders. Uh, in some cases, uh, but generally speaking, uh, it was relatively uh, it was relatively well received. Uh, you know, I learned an awful lot. I had never done a startup. Uh, obviously, I was always a corporate guy, uh, so it was for me. It was a great experience to you know to get fully a start a company out of nothing. Uh, and you learn an awful lot. They, and what I learned is that um, in order to be successful in a startup, uh, you have to have, you know, the idea, you have to have the team, you have to have the funding. Uh, but uh, first and foremost, what really makes the difference at the end of the day, it's the timing. Whatever product, whatever product, And I don't know that I'm going to do anything again, but right now I'm looking at an opportunity of another startup that I would try to do on my own. I'm, I don't really want to go into the details now, but I think what you're going to find is that with the pandemic, we are moving into a highly um, tech, um, biotechnology. We are moving into a highly... opportunities for people who are the new, you know, Facebooks of the world and so on and so forth, uh, because we, we are changing. We're going from an industrial society uh, to, and started about 15, 20 years ago, and we're moving towards a highly technological society. Uh, and the world is, you know, I don't think the world is ever going to be exactly the same as it was. Uh, a lot of the things that uh, we are now doing as a result of the pandemic are going to create some opportunities for the future. So I'm kind of looking at that and seeing whether or not, uh, you know, things could happen. Very well. And you are, you, you got involved in two projects with Marriott as well in France with a Renaissance brand. Uh, are you still, so you are a consultant for hotels, for the US and France, you have experience on both sides. How was your experience that you had not too long ago uh, in Aix-en-Provence at the, at the Renaissance? Well, it was, um, you know, um, I had never worked in France per se. <laughs> I, had, I had never worked in France. So uh, that was quite a, quite a discovery. Um, there is no question that uh, doing business in Europe, uh, in, uh, and I can say it because I'm French originally, so I I can uh, I can say what I'm about to say. <laughs> things, things are a little more complicated at times, you know. Uh, I've I've enjoyed you know my career in the United States because uh, you have the flexibility to be very creative uh, to experiment to you know manage things uh, as I was describing it uh, a few minutes ago
Labor laws are a little more complicated. Uh, uh, you don't have always be, you know, the 35 hour work week and so on and so forth. But uh, trying to be regulation, the, uh, it's more difficult to, it's a little more difficult to, but you know, it worked out. It was an interesting experience. I spent about uh, four years there and running the company, uh, a group of investors that bought a hotel, built a hotel in Aix-en-Provence, as you say. and uh, enjoyed, you know, I, I created some very good relationships, uh, but it's, it's different. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I always have a little talk about students and people looking to join our industry. What advice do you have for people who want to come in and work for the hospitality industry? What, what strength do they need to have and what kind of profile do they need to, in order to be successful and to enjoy that career? Well, uh, I would say that, first of all, um, if you're going to go into a hotel business, you have to love it or else you have to get out because, you know, it's, uh, it's a demanding business. I mean, you work when other people are having fun and so on and so forth. But I would say that the... Uh, most important quality is um, the ability to connect with people, uh, whether uh, it's employees, uh, whether it's guests, uh, whether it is your superiors, your subordinates. It, it's a hospitality business at the end of the day is uh, all about connecting and creating a relationship and uh, the ability to, you know, motivate others and, you know, just create some good positive space wherever, wherever you work. After that, um, you know, um, I mean, my, my philosophy of work is very simple. I mean, if you work hard, and build relationships around you uh, and learn the business as you go along, you're going to be successful. Uh, I wasn't any smarter than anybody else, and I was lucky enough to have, have a fairly uh, decent career uh, only because I, uh, not because I was smart, uh, but because I, you know, I enjoy the, the, con the human contact and be able to uh, create relationships. Um, and, and the ability to focus on the ability to focus on the positive rather than focusing on, on the neg negative, particularly in a business which is so driven by human beings. So that would be, uh, you know, that would be my advice to anybody wanting to go into the hotel business. I mean, this is, I can't even imagine right now uh, what it is to work in a, in a hotel right now. It has got to be very, very, very tough. And, uh, you know, the, the business will come back, but it's going to take a little bit of time. So I, 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 I have a lot of empathy for people who are in the business right now. It's, uh, it's got to be very tough. But, you know, the same, um, the same behaviors apply in times of uh, crisis or in t or normal times. So at the end of the day, it's all about uh, how do you build those relationships and how do you motivate people and how do you interact with people? That kind of thing. Do, you do you have any advice? Because you just said the word crisis and I'm like, you went through a crisis with the opening of your hotel back in 89. Do you have any feedbacks you could give to the hotel community going through the COVID, which is something we've never experienced. So it's very hard for everybody to... You know, um, I went through, um, during my career, I went through um, uh, blizzards in Boston where the city was shut down for four days and I had a hotel which was full and people. Uh, 
uh, in San Francisco. So uh, it's been an interesting series of events. Yet, uh, I don't think anything compares with uh, the COVID-19. Uh, all those crises, uh, you know, were tough, but, the, you know, at the end of the day, very manageable. COVID-19 uh, is a very uh, challenging, very scary kind of a situation. Uh, I think that the only thing that uh, the industry can do is tough it up. Uh, make sure you don't forget the people who have created your success. I understand, you know, a lot of people have been furloughed or laid off in some cases, but, you know, the business is going to come back and uh, you need to be ready to reopen and get started and uh, make sure that you don't um, pull, out, pull out the, the set of values that you have in your businesses because you're going to need those people to come back one day. So uh, tap it up, uh, make sure that you comply with all the new regulations and so on and so forth, because what you want to do at the end of the day is reassure the customer and your employees that they can come back in a hotel, particularly a very large hotel, uh, that they can have meetings again, but you know, there's going to be a series of protocols that have been to be in place. And don't take that, uh, don't take that lightly. Um, you know, you've got to react positively and put in place the, the protocols and the strategies that will protect your employees and the customer. Tough. Yeah. Well, yeah. Very well. Well, I'm going to go to something a bit lighter. I'm going to ask you for some personal favorites, if you don't mind. Okay. So, out of all the properties you travel to and experience, is there a property that really stood out as far as service, location, where you were really blown away by, by that property? Yeah, it's a, it's a tough, uh, it's <laughs> a tough <laughs> question. Because I think one of my favorite uh, hotels was in Hong Kong, actually, uh, which was a Ritz, Ritz Carlton at the time, uh, before Marriott uh, took it over. Uh, you know, I've been to Asia, and uh, the service is incredible. You know, Hong Kong was in Japan. Uh, in Japan and Hong Kong. I was in New, De even New Delhi. Uh, some of their hotels are just spectacular. You know, one of the things that has changed a little bit in the United States uh, in the hotel industry, when I opened the San Francisco Marion, uh, there were uh, five restaurants. Uh, now there's only one, uh, plus the View Lounge on top, which are still very well run, excellent facilities. But it, you know, it used to be that people went to hotels to have a culinary experience or you know, something like that. Well, you know, people in, in the U.S. very often will go to a hotel and then the first thing they want to do is get out and patronize, you know, the city and the restaurant. In Asia, uh, and people still go to hotels to enjoy the experience. And I, in some ways, I, I hope it, uh, it doesn't change. It's just, uh, you know, when I first came to, to New York uh, way back then, I mean, hotel restaurants were very much sold after. Uh, now, you know, the tendency is to think of the past, and I think it's going to continue to And now we lost, sorry, we lost you for a few seconds. 
but it's okay. <laughs> what's your What's your favorite restaurant you've ever been to? What's your favorite place? Is there one? Oh God! <laughs> in the U.S. In the U.S. Let's say the U.S. Uh, in the U.S. Uh, well, you know, a lot of the uh, restaurants in San Francisco. The uh, it doesn't exist anymore. But um, uh, oh gosh! Uh, Sorry to put you. Fleur de Lis. Ah, Fleur de Lis, yes. Fleur okay. de Lis, when it existed in uh, San Francisco, was one of them. La Folie, which uh, I think uh, Roland Passo just uh, closed it, what, about a year ago, I still uh, was one of my very. Hmm. Uh, Alain? Uh, in uh, San Francisco, who seems to have a phenomenal reput reputation. Uh, uh, in uh, Yonville, um, the French Laundry in Yonville is yeah, yeah. pretty, pretty uh, spectacular kind of a place. So they've done some good job, but you know, there's so many, uh, so many different types of ethnic yeah. restaurants and so forth now. It's very difficult. And I've been fortunate being in the business to experience a lot of very fancy restaurants, but you know, at the end of the day, I still like my, my old French bistros and things like that. You know, I live in uh, I live in Sonoma and right in Glen Ellen. There's a little French boulangerie patisserie that opened a couple of years ago, and you know, it takes me 20 minutes to get there, but I'll go all the way there just to have <laughs> my cafe croissant. <laughs> So at the end of the day, you know, it's what you like and uh, the, the culinary experience in the United States um, is outstanding when you think about it. I mean, uh, when I came to, to the U.S. Uh, in the late 60s, that was uh, meat and potato mostly. Uh, there were a few great French restaurants and that was it. Now you've got everything from Chinese to Thai to Vietnamese to, you know, Mexicans, whatever. So Italian uh, and the diversity is incredible. Very well. Alain, I thank you for your time. We are reaching the hour and I know you, you have to go. So I really thank you for the opportunity. If anyone has any questions, please, please put it in the comments and make sure to, uh, to redirect those questions to you, Alain. Uh, before we part ways, is there anything, last words you want to share to everybody before we go, Alain? Well, we, relative to the to the hotel industry, um, I, my hat is off to all of those uh, general managers and their staff who are working right now uh, in the hospitality industry, and that uh, you know are going through a very very difficult time. The only thing that I've learned uh, from you know some crisis again is that too will pass, uh, and, but it. But, but, you know, as I say, I have a lot of empathy for people working in the business right now because it's, a, it's tough and too many people are out of work and uh, it's too bad. But just like everything else, it will come back. You know, when I, when I came to New York, I saw all the, the cycles, business cycles. You know, when I got to New York, the hotel industry was a bit of a disarray. Uh, occupancy was in the 50%, uh, the hotels were older and so on and so forth. And then uh, business started picking up in New York and they built new hotels and everybody was making money. And then, you know, I've seen all those cycles. This one is a, is a bit tougher, but it will come back and just hang in there. And uh, I'm sure you don't forget uh, those people who made you successful. And these are, um, you know, at the end of the day, these are the employees that work for you. Yeah. Well, Alain, thank you. Thank you for being with Check In every Friday at 10 a.m. Uh, once again, if any questions you want me to ask to Alain, let us know. Alain, have a great day. Merci beaucoup. And yeah, thank you very much for the time. Enjoyed it. Take care. You're welcome. Thank you, Alain. Have a good day. Bye-bye.